The remarkable thing about this is, this is the only cave on this mountain. So, if the sort of Arabian alternative is true, and this is Mount Sinai, then this is the place. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that night that he might die. And he said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, arise and eat. Then he looked and there was by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that day, of that food, 40 days and 40 nights, as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel, forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But... The Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. But the, and after that fire, a still, small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his head in his face, wrapped his face in his mantle, excuse me, and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nishmi, as king over Israel, and Elijah, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Maracha, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. Whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved in 7,000 in Israel all whose knees have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. God met Elisha in just a quiet, I've heard the idea of a still, small voice, perhaps being something like a whisper, just a, 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 a soft voice. God said, that's how I'm going to speak to you. And I love what God said to Elijah. He, he gave him more work to do. Go anoint this guy king over Syria. Go uh, anoint this guy, the next king over Israel. Go get Elisha and uh, train him up as your successor. You know, Elijah wanted to die. God said, no, no, I, I've got more work for you to do. 
And he even gave him the one who would be his successor. And when God heard from Elijah twice, I alone am left. There's nobody left. You know, not, not only was Elijah mourning that he was alone, but that was also way, his way of confessing that he felt like his work was a failure. There, there's nobody there. I, who have I won? And God said, there's 7,000. 7,000 that you don't know about. What an encouragement that must have been to Elijah. And the last thing I would say, I know Miles and, and, uh, and Silvan would have other things, but, you know, Elijah cried out to God, God, take me, kill me, take my life. And lots of us have been there. I don't want to go anymore, Lord. Take my life. You know, not only did God say no to Elijah, he said no so emphatically that he never died. He was carried up alive on a whirlwind into heaven. Hmm. And since God said, no, no, and no again. Not only am I not going to take your life now, I'm never going to take your life. You're going to come up, you're going to be unique and come up alive to heaven. I think that's pretty awesome. Now, the remarkable thing about this is, this is the only cave on this mountain. So, if the sort of Arabian alternative is true, and this is Mount Sinai, then this is the place. Quite, quite striking. 